All right, in my review of the Avio 3-inch, I said I was gonna come back to it after I got the arm fixed, which now I do, and do a little tuning session on it. I had some settings at the end of that video, which I implemented. We're gonna see how those fly and tweak it out a little bit further and just, you know, get it as good as I think I can get it and uh, go from there. So before we get started on this one, let's take a look at the DVR footage from the last time and then those settings changes and then we'll jump into how that looks on the flight footage for this. Video reception looks decent. Let's see how the PID tune is. Uh, looks all right. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, a little wash. I think we could probably tighten that up. Tighten that up a little bit. I have these uh, gold line batteries on here. I don't, I put it on a two, 2S charge rate, but I don't know, it's stacks like crazy. Down a 3.0 volts per cell. I don't know about that. Yeah, I think we just work on the wash a little bit. But uh, she flies good. Like I always talk about, I love these quads. For something you can just fly around the house. It doesn't disturb the neighborhood. I would never do this with a five inch. Oh. <laughs> okay, so on the last video we made some adjustments. I did do a quick flight on that and I want to get to the flutter reaction on it. So I'm going to actually use, I'm not outside here because it's, it's actually drizzling. It sucks a little bit. But uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to go check out my PD balance. In that video I recommended going to 1.5. I didn't hear any flutter reaction too much so I'm going to take this up to 1.7 and I also did take a quick peek at the black box I think I could take this uh, stick response all the way up to 2.0. The noise performance looked good, the throbbles look good so I didn't really see any, uh, it is DVR. Other settings in here, TPA breakpoint, uh, 1800, I like that, that's Fine, I that's fine. It's only taking the D term down by 20%, so that's not that far. So just reducing the D term a little bit at full throttle. Actually, I'm gonna uh, since that is so high, I'm gonna bring that up to like 0.6. I'm gonna really, really drop the D term quite a bit at full throttle, just because that break point is basically 80% throttle. When you have 1800, just take off the one and the zero at the end, so it's 80% throttle. And then just a review of this. From last time this slider on here at the top here ignore that i have all the gyro filters off here and i did also take a peek at huh oh here it is the dynamic notch and uh where the noise there was really no noise below 150 so i'm going to set this to um 135 just so that 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 notch doesn't go so low because obviously that has an impact on prop wash performance if that's when you're, you know, when you're coming around and you're starting to ramp up, the notch should uh, be moving up the track. But if you're at zero throttle, uh, you're going to have that notch resting at whatever that min is there. So if it's at the lower that is, um, the more latency you're going to have. Uh, with this, we'll just bring this down to two for RPM harmonics. I'm sure there's there's really not that much latency difference between two or three. So yeah, you could take that or leave it. I think a hundred on here is okay. Actually, I might raise this up to 125. Let's just raise this up to 135 as well. See how that goes. So that's gonna bring those up so they don't rest so low um, when it's 
at 0% throttle. So 135 on both of those. 250, 350 for the min and max. D term, we're gonna leave all that stuff. That slider is at 1.2 right now. We're gonna leave that go. And then we move those gains up a little bit. So those are the tweaks I'm gonna do uh, and see how that goes. I really would like to get to a fluttery spot on here. I did not clear the black box yet, so I can use my app for that and just hit erase flash here. Yes, erase all. And that will erase the flash on the black box log, which is always really handy in the field. What I'm really excited about is uh, checking out this Speedy B flight controller that I got, because you can actually pull up the black box on your phone uh, with it using Bluetooth and whatnot. So we have that set. I might actually, since I'm not really looking at noise performance anymore, I might set that to one kilohertz. The reason I want to do that is at two kilohertz, you're going to get a little bit more loop jitter until Betaflight, until hopefully this PR by Steve Evans gets merged into Betaflight 4.3. He did some DMA improvements. That will be an exciting PR, but again, we're on Betaflight 4.2 here yet. I think we are set. Let's ready to go and take a look at how this looks. Hopefully it's when it stops drizzling. <laughs> All right, get situated here, and uh, I'm in good shape. Let's check it out. Still no fluttery sound. Seems all right. Hot flash seems a little bit better. Sitting into these trying to really draw it out. Yeah. I mean, it's still there if you try to... I can raise it out the most as you flip around and... Uh, and uh, do... raise the throttle slowly how you can really draw it out the best you can. So I think it's uh, looking pretty good. Let's do some step moves here just to see what the log looks like. Do some. And uh, like I said with the throbbles, let's check that out. I'll show you what that looks like. I really don't see any, so. Yeah, prop wash is much better. Yep. I did check, this is uh, this quad comes with BL Heli M ESC firmware. It's running 24 kilohertz, so I wanted to check if it was 148. You know what's interesting with BL Heli S? It's, there's so many variants anymore, it's kind of hard to even know what firmware you're running. Um, but it's 16.9 and it's set to 24 kilohertz, which is what I wanted. Yeah, I mean, there's still some prop wash. Ooh, got a little wind. But um, yeah, it's, it's much better than it was. Like in turns like that, in there, I didn't have any that I can see in the PVR. There was a little bit. Hit that stick a little bit up there. <laughs> I think it's all grayed out, man. Woo.
Um, what other moves? Just smooth forward flight, I guess. Eh, that's smooth. I can't tell much with the BBR. to see everything in black and white. It would be so nice once the uh this in here. Alright, I think the battery's getting low. It's hard to tell with this uh, gold line since it sags the whole time. We're getting down to 3.0 volts. So let's bring it in. Oh yeah, five minute flight time's not too bad, huh? I think that's five minutes. Yeah, it should be. Engines disarmed. Fly mins, yeah. Yeah, total arm time. Five minutes. That's pretty good. All right, so now that we're back from that flight, let's check out what the log sees. I usually try to clip off the very beginning here because I was sitting on the ground. Um, right away, I'm seeing that yeah, it's a little much for the noise level. Uh, if I look at my gyro uh, noise, so trace setup... Uh, uh, zero here and I go to my gyro scaled you're gonna see that uh, first of all that the logs cut down here or the spectrograms cut down because I was at uh, 1k sampling but there's really not much noise below 200 Hertz it's there's a lot up above that spectrum area so when we were setting these notches uh, down to to be down here that's that's really not too bad so one of the things I want to try with this is going into the configurator and normal conventional wisdom or thoughts are that your dynamic notch, since your RPM filters are handling the stuff up high, to set this so it tackles the stuff down low, but there's not a lot of stuff down low. So you can see 350 on here, if I go back to the spectrograph, 350 on here is not, you know, there's really nothing down here to, to, to get it's mostly up higher uh, in the spectrograph. You can see 350 is right here. There's really nothing. The peaks really start in, around the 400s. Again, if I go to y'all, same, same deal. So a lot of cases for the smaller quads, I kind of break that rule of thumb a little bit and I will go in here and set this up. Now I have a, a log from before. This is the flight that I didn't show you. So this is a 2K sampling. And you can see here again from 200 down, really nothing. This is the full, so 2K sampling, so I can see the full spectrograph of noise here. And you can see primarily between 200 and 600 is where my motor noise bands are. Uh, so that is, I guess, roll. Maybe that was pitch. So let's go see if that's, this is roll, same deal, 200, 600, and then yaw, again, 200 to around 600. So. What I want to do here is I'm going to set this to 600, leave that at 130. Uh, yeah, I'll, leave, I'll leave it go down to 130. It could really, you know, you could probably bring this up to 250 or uh, I'm sorry, 150 here. Same thing. We'll let that go there as well. I'm going to see if that just makes a difference um, all in itself right there. Just unleashing the dynamic notch to go a little bit higher range. The other thing you could consider doing is bringing this down instead of a 1.2, bringing that down to a 1.0. But I'll leave it at 1.2 for now. I don't know that it's gonna make that much difference. Um, I think just letting the notch uh, get a broader base might might help, you know, get whatever the RPM filters are not tacked. Coming back to the log, going to Trace Setup 4, turning off Expo, you can see uh, just some of the twitch moves I was doing uh, and we're looking like we're on the PD balance pretty good And this was again with the feed forward at 2.0 for the stick response slider I mean at 2.0, which is really just feed forward you can see that it's it's rolling into it a little bit um, Here, so I, I think we could push it a little bit more and you know a good aggressive P term, you know having that PD balance uh, ratio as high as it can be, basically the P gain being as high as it can be without having uh, lots of overshoot is uh, typically what I find works well for prop wash. With the P gain really strong, when the when that you enter prop wash and it starts to oscillate, you, that nose will start to move off 
your stick tracking. Well, the P gain is what helps push that back to there. The D term is basically saying don't move at all. It's trying to get rid of the oscillations, but sometimes the oscillations can make the nose drift off and the P gain is what would help that stay tracking right on the nose so you wouldn't see it kind of bounce off and bounce back into uh, the tracking position. So you really want that P gain nice and nice and high. It's basically as high as you can get it um, without it overshooting a ton um, because it's not have enough dampening because of the, the D term. So with that, I think I will go ahead and try to bring this down one notch now in Betaflight 4.2, it's goofy. So you have this uh, one, uh, 51, 51 here. So I'm gonna actually bring this down and you see it doesn't move my P terms, it just moves my D terms down. So then I have to move this one back up to then uh, get the intended or desired endpoint where my P's move up and my D's stay the same. In Betaflight 4.3, that will be fixed. Some people might take exception to me using the word fixed, but I guess the last thing we can look at here is going back into Trace Setup 4. And then I'm gonna go in and actually these D terms, since I have so much noise, kind of gets in the way. So I'm gonna turn those off for the time being. And I'm gonna turn off P term as well. I don't wanna see those. I can turn off I here, I guess, too. So we'll turn P, um, yeah. Uh, I guess we'll hit the I here as well. So we'll kind of get the P and D terms out of there. What I want to look at is specifically my feed forward traces and see how smooth they are. So you can see, and we have a little jerk there, but in between here where I'm not really moving the sticks, you can see that there's not a lot of jerking or weird motion here. It looks pretty smooth as well. Here's a little bit, but I am moving the stick up and down. So I might be able to push it a little bit more uh, here looks okay. So this has to deal with jitter. If you, you know, we, if you talk to the Express LRS guys or anybody in the nose, they'll talk about trying to reduce the amount of jitter in your RC signal. Now this is a FR Sky D16, but nevertheless, uh, it's feed forward averaging two on this, so it's not too bad. And the, I don't see any jitter in here, maybe just a little bit. So if you don't have a lot of jitter, and again, the best spot to look is, um, you know, as, as you're doing a, a move or if you do like a slow stick move. So to check out RC jitter in your thing, just take like your sticks and do like a slow roll or you keep on the throttle maybe and just kind of roll over. You could punch up and jump off the throttle too and just do a slow roll over and roll back and pitch forward and pitch back. And then again, look at these signals to see if you start seeing that spike up a lot. If you do, then this next part you can't really adjust. But since I don't see a lot of that stuff, uh, it's not in the GUI yet. It will be in Betaflight 4.3 up here. There's a feed forward boost. So for now, I'm gonna go into the CLI, type in get FF, and then I should be able to see it right here feed forward boost factor and type in set feed forward boost uh, i'm going to change that to 25 anywhere from 20 to 25 or anywhere from 20 to 30 you might be okay anything above 30 is i haven't you'd have to have a pretty clean rx with a little bit of you know hardly any jitter to, to make that work so the reason i'm doing that is uh right here i'm on uh stick response all the way up at 2.0. Now I could come off the sliders and start typing in numbers, but I, I really like to use the slider. So that's as high as it can go. How I can get a little bit more out of it is setting feed forward boost to higher value. Now, if you have a lot of jitter, that's gonna cause jitter issues, but feed forward boost does make a significant impact of when the feed forward starts to boost up. What you will see with higher amounts of feed forward boost is that you will come into like a move like this and you'll see this where the feed forward starts it'll be out here further a little bit further out so we'll kind of get this signal a little bit more advanced of the p term and uh, obviously you know get your tracking a little bit closer to your sticks if that's what your goals are and it also uh, will reduce uh, motor saturation a little bit since it will kind of get a jump on it won't wait uh, as long to start to push the motors and if the motors can spin up kind of over a longer time frame, then they won't have a, a tendency to saturate where you're just going from like zero to 100 and you know, hardly any time, you can kind of get them ramping up a little bit uh, quicker. 
Okay, so with that, let's uh, do a final flight on this and see how it looks. I probably, at that point, I'm good. You know, you can noodle with this stuff to your heart's content, but I get to a spot where I'm like, yeah, that's, that's close enough. You know, that prop wash previously was pretty good to me. Um, so I can always draw out prop wash. It's not like I can ever not do that. I don't know. I've flown a lot of different quads from a lot of different people and I can always draw it out. So there's no tendency to say, well, I want it to be completely prop wash free. I just want it to be pretty minor. We really have to be thrown into a move to draw it out. Cause typically in my flights, I'm not drawing it out like that. It's only when I'm kind of doing tuning that I draw it out. So I want to get it to a level that's obviously not completely prop wash free because I don't really think that's possible versus just where it comes out all the time just at normal flights. I want to get it to that spot where it's, you almost have to draw it out to really see it. Okay. We're going to make this fairly quick flight. Engines are. Seems like it's... But I want to see how the noise looks. Alright, so giving it hell. I think you just, a lot of times you just get to that mechanical limit on prop wash. You're just not going to make it any better. Or at least I don't know how to make it any better. So if anybody knows a better way, you let me know. That looks pretty good. Okay, so you can see this was the flight on the left where we had the dynamic notch restricted. This is the flight on the right where we opened it up. Now I can't see the full spectrum again because of the 1K sampling, but uh, this is the D trace and you can see the difference. By enabling the dynamic notch to go into these higher frequencies before we were restricting it to what, 350? Now it can go up in here and help uh, clean up anything, the RPM, uh, notches might be missing from frame stuff or whatever else. So you can see that's just no longer here at all, whereas here it is. And again, D traces are the ones that have the most amplification of noise, so you can kind of really see the difference, and it's the, on the pitch and roll. So hopefully that is one helpful tip that when you have a smaller quad, considering just you know taking this up to 600, maybe bringing the, the min up a little bit, since your noise is generally shifted up to the higher frequency range, and then the dynamic notch can come along uh, the RPM, and then you can get rid of these low pass filters down here that add really a lot more delay. Okay, some of the other tweaks we made were, you can see we upped the PD balance, so you can see we're still not overshooting here, so I could probably uh, increase that a little bit more. And, you know, going for the critically damped uh, thing, this, it looks a little better. It's not like it's, you know, the, the gyro is not like coming up, stopping short, and then rolling into the where the sticks are at. It's kind of just rolling right into it. So that's that's really what we want to see. Now I had some, I think I did some twitch moves here as well. We could take a look at those. Yeah, here. So uh, again, you can see uh, specifically on this one that it's, you know, just rolling in. You can see there's a little bit of a, a roll in there. That's pretty good. But, you know, talking about being on the sticks, I mean, this thing is right on it. Um, and a lot of that helps with that feed forward boost, bringing that up. So coming back to here, just kind of going through these, you can see in these twitches where I'm twitching back and forth, the quad is really just right on top of my, you know, tracking my rates like really well. 
uh, heat seeing same thing here on roll see what I'm talking about with this feed forward boost how this humps up a little bit earlier and this is now pushed up a little bit earlier over here as well so that's where it can be and you can see I can even push that a little bit more I'm not seeing a lot of jitter in my feed forward signal uh, what you want to do is turn on um, feed forward you can see prop wash here this is it you know working against prop wash so you're you're expected to see this spike up and down to try to kill out that prop wash so that that's fairly normal um, this looks pretty good for full throttle punch uh, you know again we're reducing the d term down there uh, by that cutoff we're reducing the d term by 60 percent so any of the high frequency noise that's why you see that right here right above this cutoff of 1800 it starts to reduce the d term from there to there by 60 percent so from this point if you're watching the throttle stick here from this point right around there to here the d gain gets drop down by 60% so when you're at full throttle punch it really enables your motors to get that that you know that high scream because it takes out any of the noise that they're creating and it kind of it's almost like a filter it's like an additional filter to some extent uh, but it's zero latency there's no latency with the filter that you have to deal with so it's uh it's, it's a nice little neat little trick but in situations like this where we have you know I'm inducing some prop wash here that's why this is going up and down uh, so much like that. This is almost really what you want to see in your motors because this is your motors basically your flight controllers commanding your motors to do the maximum ups and downs they can do like drop to zero go to full throttle drop to zero go to full throttle to try to compensate as, as quickly as they can. Obviously they're not able to keep up with those commands but if you don't give them that full command in the first place then you just get a softer response. So you're getting kind of the the max response you can. So once you start to see that your motor traces are kind of spiking full, you know, up and down all the way in prop wash, and you say like, wow, you still have a little prop wash. It's like, well, that's, is, you know, it's as, basically as good as it's gonna get. You're already commanding, you know, ramps from zero to 100%. And if it if motors can't keep up with that, then you'd need lighter props or stronger motors or something like that. Well, thanks everybody for coming along for a little bit of three inch quadcopter tuning. Uh, hopefully you can see it's kind of more of the same. Any quad class, I kind of do the same operations and things. I, those are the things I kind of look for and look at, try to reduce the filtering as much as I can, try to get those sliders up um, the way we talked about, try to get as much feed forward boost as I can. I will take this tune, probably uh, tamp it down, tamper it down a little bit for a three inch and put it on the UAV Tech website. Thanks everybody again for coming along for the ride. And I hope this helps.